What we will discuss today is the four pillars of hotel marketing. So, what should I do? Is it better? Okay, this is like the new lightsaber, you see? So, and uh, um, what we'll see today is the four pillars of hotel marketing. So now, hotel marketing is nothing so complicated. They, they, they make it look like it's very complicated, but it's not rocket science, okay? It's very simple. So we will go through some simple, basic uh, tips that you can use to uh, improve your direct bookings. Okay, the four pillars are basically just four, and it's, uh, the first one is popularize, capture, convert, and share. Now, to understand this, you need to understand how the guest book today. Some years ago, I, I'm in the hotel business since 1999, so I remember when you had to book for a hotel, you needed to go on Google, or maybe other search engine at the time, and you had to look for hotel in Athens and you had kind of like 10 different SEO results, uh, organic results, and you open all the websites and then you book. Right now, it's not like that anymore, luckily. And what they do is they, first of all, they search for a location. And what was telling uh, Gianluca before is totally right. Sometimes when they book, they don't even know where they want to go. Okay, that's why you're using the banner on other destination. They make a short list of the hotels, uh, so based on the filter they will find on TripAdvisor or Booking.com. They compare their option and they, they, they look for the best deal. Now, how should you market yourself with this new type of search that is called vertical search? It's not that important to be first on generic keywords like hotel in Athens, okay? What is very important is that you are listed with a very good ranking in all the possible uh, list of your destination. That can be review sites, OTA, local directories, etc. You need to promote your USP. Do you know what a USP is? Exactly, unique selling point or unique selling proposition. That's basically the thing you only have that makes you different uh, from all the other hotel, okay? And of course, you have to give the best deal. There's no point, you know, if I travel, I'm outside, you know, I travel kind of like 100 nights a year, and so I see a lot of hotels. And sometimes I call the hotel, I, I, I check the price on booking.com, I call the hotel, just ask for a little discount because I know he's paying at least 15, 18% commission. And most of the time, the answer I get is, well, that's a special offer only for booking.com. The price, is if you book directly, is higher. So this is really not helping you in terms of uh, 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 increasing your direct bookings. Now, what is the goal to popularize your hotel? Is to make potential guests aware that you even exist, okay? You just took for granted that anybody knows your hotel, but we're not, we don't. So what you need to do to popularize it is to be present in every possible directory. Now, let's see what are the source of direct bookings. The first one, we're uh, on a very digital uh, era, but it's still word of mouth, because it's what we do. When I travel, the first thing I do, I don't go to TripAdvisor. If I need to go here to Athens, and I have a friend that went to Athens before, I ask to him, because I trust him. Okay, and it's basically what you do. If you have a friend or somebody in your family that he, uh, went to a place you need to go, you will probably ask him first because you trust this guy. The second, uh, the second one, of course, is TripAdvisor and other review sites. That is basically, think about TripAdvisor as a digital word of mouth, okay? So basically, that's it. It's the conversation you have with your family, with your wife, uh, with my cat sometime. And basically, you put it on TripAdvisor. That's it. OTAs, repeating clients, this only for some destination, okay? Other destination, if you look at Rome, for example, it's very, uh, or Paris, you don't have a lot of returning guests. Press and magazine, so um, typical PR. Search engines and blogs. Now, 27% of your customer um, find your hotel via friends or family. 
it's a huge amount of people. And your free publicity is TripAdvisor. Now, Gianluca told you about several things you can do with TripAdvisor, that is, you know, the business listing or meta search. I have my own theory on meta search. Maybe if we got time, I, I, I will tell you. But uh, what you can do, and it costs you nothing, is to have a very good reputation there, okay? I have one of my clients that the only thing I do all of the time is reporting all the bad reviews he received. Now he's number one on Rome, and he doesn't want anything else from me. You know, the only thing, every, every time he receives a bad review, he calls me and I report it. So, and it's very, very important. I can tell you, first one on 1,300 hotels, if he wants to sell room at 500 euros, he sells room at 500 euros, okay? Because it's, it's not even that it's great. You know, it's a normal hotel, but the perception is so high that he can really uh, create the price. Now, I know sometimes you feel kind of lonely. You, you see there is a, a, a little age, and this is the hotel. And you see all these giants. It's Booking.com, it's TripAdvisor, you got Expedia, you got uh, two operators, etc. But what you can do, you can use the power of all these directories. So maybe you cannot fight, you know, as Mohammed Ali and me, but you can fight kind of like, you know, a, a, a street fight. Let's call it like that. Now, the 20% of your direct bookings come from people who found you in an OTA. And sometimes I speak to my clients and they, they say, look, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna be on booking.com anymore. They're enemies. Uh, they are partner, you know, they are taking my blood, they are taking my kidneys and my newborn. It's not like that. They are not your partners, they are not taking your kidney and your newborn. The only thing they can do is increase your branding. So, of course, reservation will come via booking.com. But a lot of this reservation would never come to your website because they just find you there. So, one-fifth of your reservation come from people who found you in an OTA. Always remember that. 2014, it's more important to have a high ranking on, three, on, three, on um, Booking.com than to be first, organically first, for a keyword like Hotel in Athens. People trust pros. So, uh, why? Because people want selection. To make a choice, it's something hard for the human uh, being, you know? If you put me... I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a shoe freak, so whenever you put me on a, on a, on a uh, shop of shoe, if I have more than one option, I just get crazy and I buy nothing. So basically, because it's stressful to choose, and professional helps you to choose. So bloggers, we will come back later there. This is uh, low in uh, math, and it's the feet low, and basically it's very easy. The bigger the target, the easiest is to, 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 to reach it, okay? So the more directories you're in, the easiest is for you to be found and be booked. So basically, the first pillar is this one. Be visible on all your possible directory. Don't think that uh, OTAs are your enemies. Don't think that TripAdvisor is an enemy. None of these are good or evil. They're not just Satan or God. They are just tools. Use them as tools, okay? 87% of your uh, future guests will, have this, will discover your hotel before going on your website. Forget about the fact, you know, you sometimes think that a very good website can bring uh, visits. It's not. The, book, the website, it only brings reservation. It only needs to be ready to transform visits to bookings. Okay, it's not bringing any visits per se. Okay, the visits are coming from some, some, somewhere else. This is very important. We, we are not in 1994 anymore, fortunately or unfortunately, but this is how they, they, uh, they book now. Second pillar, now you understood how to be present in all the uh, directories. Now you need to capture the clients or it's still the potential clients so far. And Capturing means that you need to be at the right place at the right time. If you are in the right place at the wrong time, you're wasting money. If you are at the right time, but the place is wrong, you're losing money. The first thing you need to uh, avoid at all costs is brain jacking. Do you all know what brain jacking is? Okay, explain. 
So brain jacking is basically when, do you know when uh, you Google the name of your hotel and the first result is booking.com or is TripAdvisor, right? Hello? Are you hoteliers? Uh, maybe I, uh, it's not my room. So basically when you click, what's the name of your hotel? Help me out with this. Hotel, uh, let's say Hotel uh, Simone. What's that? Hotel Scamnos. Did I, is it good? Okay. So basically when you Google your name, the first result is probably booking.com or TripAdvisor, right? The first ads. This is basically brain jacking because they are buying uh, as a keyword the name of your hotel and they are uh, bringing traffic to their website. What you need to do here, because it's totally legal, you signed a clause in your contract so they can do it, even if you, are, uh, if you have uh, a trademark, a copyrighted brand. Uh, the only thing you can do is you can do advertising on, uh, first of all, the brand of your hotel. So forget about doing AdWords for secondary keywords. Best hotel in Greece, okay. 10,000 visits, one reservation. Or luxury hotel in Greece, 5,000 euro, no reservation. Just focus on the brand of your hotel and all the possible uh, um, keywords related to the brand. So the name of the hotel plus the word Greece or the name of the hotel plus the word Athens or the, or the name of the hotel or the typo. If your hotel is called, uh, I don't know, uh, Athens, you can try with Athens, okay? So just buy all these keywords. You need to protect your brand. 82% of the um, ads for searches on the hotel name, so we are not talking about secondary keywords, is on um, OTA or competitors. Consider travel is the third market globally for advertising for Google. And this explains why, you know, HPA is going so slow, et cetera, et cetera. So basically what you need to do is you need to protect your brand at all cost. So you need to take your Google Plus page, uh, do an advertising on your brand, okay? Of course, there are some cases that is very expensive. Uh, let's say if your hotel is called Hotel Athens, the only suggestion I can give you, change the name of the hotel because you will have a lot of generic search, you know? So even when we do startups, for example, something we do, we do an analysis in terms of volume of search on the name we can give to a, a client, okay? So if your hotel is called Hotel Athens, basically you will take some people interested in your hotel, but you will take all the people interested in all the hotel in Athens. So it's really not brand protection. That's secondary keywords and it costs you a lot of money. Uh, so basically that's it. That's very, very important. Right now, it's not on the slide because it's pretty new, but in the US, uh, Google launched the uh, tree pack. I don't know if some of you uh, seen it. So basically, you will see uh, the first two ads and then you will see the result on uh, uh, Google Hotel Finder with big photos of the hotel. So basically, the organic result will be always lower in the search page. If you want my two cents, in two, three years, the brand of the hotel organically will be in the second page. So that's why it's so important to uh, do uh, very good advertising. Now, uh, take a look at this. This is Google Trend. Uh, when Google was talking, he, he told you before, what is that? And basically, uh, it's a free tool, huh? so you can use it too. Take a look. This is a, a, a search I did for hotels in Athens. Take a look, is the graph is going down. But um, the reservation, direct um, online reservation are, are increasing at a very high speed. So basically you have 10% more reservation in Europe um, online every year. Now compare this result with other two keywords, booking.com and TripAdvisor. Can you see? This doesn't mean that people is less interested in Athens. This means that people go on booking.com, filter the hotel, and then search for your name. So it's useless to buy hotel in Athens. What you need to buy is the name of your hotel, okay? So the second pillar is this. You have to capture your clients or 50% of them will just go through a OTA before finding your website, okay? 
there is a study we did and, uh, uh, with uh, uh, around 3,000 hotels, and 57% of people click on the first link. Now, we are, in this room, we are, we are all very smart. We are all, you know, little Einsteins. So we know the difference between uh, organic search and an advertising. But if I, every time I have a doubt, I just take, you know, my grandma and I put it in front of a computer and I say, look, try to book this hotel. She doesn't know the difference between an advertising and an organic search. So it, you see the first result for her, that's the website. I, I'm a former general manager of hotel. So I remember exactly people calling me, telling, look, I'm on your website. And then you discover they were on booking.com. So they know nothing about. So forget about the fact that everybody knows what we know. It's not. Let's go to the third one. Am I in time? I'm just trying to do as fast as I can. Uh, the third one is convert. Okay? So now, uh, everybody knows that you exist. You capture the, the client. Now you need to convert. Okay? So this is key. Know your USP, so clear what a USP is, right? And make sure is exactly what you're selling. And this is very important. USP, your USP is never what you think it is. It's what your client think it is. Now, I have a lot of, you know, I had a, a client of mine that, I won't say the name, uh, but uh, Gete, you know the writer, slept in the hotel for one night. So basically, all the marketing they were doing was on this night of Gete. Now, and they were so proud of this Gete night, you know, and it was just all this storm and drunk thing. And it was, you know, very romantic. Yes, I read Gete too, but I don't care. I want a good hotel. So basically, what, do I, what I did is I went online and used uh, what we call the sentiment analysis. So we check all the reviews and understood what the clients liked about the hotel. And nobody was talking about Gete. They were talking about the fact that the hotel had a wonderful view. So what we did, we completely changed the um, marketing strategy from this is the hotel where Gete slept for 50 minutes, you know, to best view in Sicily. I can tell you it was in Sicily, okay? So basically, don't think that you know what is your power, because you do not know. I, I didn't know when I was a GM, because I was there all the time, 24 hours a day. I didn't uh, really understand. Something for me was uh, uh, maybe my strength, and in fact, it was a weakness. So just go on TripAdvisor, and what I usually do, you don't even need a software to do that. Just create a simple Excel file with good context, bad context read all your reviews and check the, the keyword. So if you have stuff, and the word stuff is always in your reviews, and it's always in a bad context, probably you need to do something on your stuff. And moreover, you do not publish photos of your stuff online, or you do not put on your website, we got the best stuff ever, okay? So understand like that, I can tell you, you will find a lot of surprises. Hotel website has three seconds to sell. So forget about, I want all the history of Athens in one page. I want to know why the, these French guys stole the Nike or Samotracha. We don't care. We just put a big, good photo, a payoff explaining USP. That's it. The only thing that the client will remember is the emotion he has when it comes to the website. Think about it. When you go on booking.com, and you book a two-star hotel, or you book a five-star luxury hotel, they, are the they have the same exact template. The only thing you can do to beat them is to give something unique. And something unique means big photo and an emotional impact. And what you need to show with the photo in a little um, uh, phrase is your location, the comfort, and the value. The unique, seller, the unique selling proposition is always one of these three or a combination of those, okay? Of course, if you are in the center of Athens, location is your USP. If you are very far from Athens, but you have a very good price, maybe you should push on the, on the value for money, okay? So that's a good sentiment analysis can really help you. 
emotion sells. Take a look at this photo, and take a look at this photo. It's basically the same photo. Now, I'm not saying that you need to Photoshop anything, you know, but if you have some photo so-and-so, well, maybe a little, you know, just Photoshop it a little. Would you go to McDonald's if they market with the real photos of the hamburgers? I really don't think so. You check it on the, you know, I don't eat meat, luckily, but, you know, when you check the, the, the I want to eat meat when I see the, 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 the advertising from McDonald's, because they got this Big Mac like that, then you have a meat by McDonald's and it's kind of like super thin, but people is keep going then. So what you need to do is just take a look at your photo and just Photoshop it a little, okay? It's not a crime against humanity. You will not go to jail if you Photoshop. Another thing, keep it as simple as possible. Take a look at this website. Take a look at all the information that are here. Bam. You see the red dots? You have special offers, you have about us, you have best rate guarantee, you have the hotel, accommodation, business travel, group travel, meeting and events around New York City, FAQ, reservation, then you have the coordinates, and I really don't know why, maybe they think a GPS can check the website. I'm, I really don't get this. Maybe for robots. They got uh, Super Bowl, great rates, so it's not only best rate guarantee, it's best rate guarantee, but it's even uh, great rates, free breakfast, transit passes, perfect location, then you have city bike, events, blogging news, sideman, career, blah, 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 blah. So now when you do a website, think of all the things you want to put on the website and then forget about it, okay? A website need only to have a big photo and a phrase. We don't care to know about your hotel because we already know. When you arrive on the website, we check it out. We know on TripAdvisor, we read the reviews, we read on Booking.com. We don't want to read, we want to be, we want an emotion, okay? And you've got a fantastic city, this city is great. You know, every time I come back, it's just, when I left Paris, I, it was snowing, it was one degree. I arrived here and I said, do you want to speak? Of course I want to speak. So it's just consider this, okay? Show the photos, don't show the, the, the text. Take a look, this is one of our websites, and as you can see, the type of uh, communication is completely different. There is a, a very uh, clear call to action, so the book now button, and then you have just a few sections and a very big photo. Now, the emotional impact you have here, it's not the same you have here. And you can see, take a look at the number of clicks you can have. I don't know, 20, maybe more, 30, 10. A clear navigation and a well-presented USP generate 40% clicks more on your book now button. So whenever you want to add something on your website, cut your ends. Whenever you want to add, think about it another time. The less you have on the website, the better, okay? Of course, don't get too minimal. At least the book now button should be on the website, huh? Uh, another thing that is all, almost un, so underrated, but it's very important, the average guests today spend 14 minutes on your website and 11 minutes on your booking engine. So now you made a fantastic website, okay? And I want to book. I go to your booking engine and it's no photos, no responsive for mobile, I cannot book, you know, so basically you bring all the volume, but there is no conversion. Right now, a booking engine should be a second website. Even though, uh, remember what Gianluca was telling you about meta search. When you do a meta search campaign, when you do uh, Trip Connect, you don't go to the website, you go straight to the, to the booking engine. And I have a lot of reservation of people that doesn't even go to the website. TripAdvisor, Booking Engine. On the Booking Engine, you can see all the information, all the photo, books, okay? 57% of internet users will visit the hotel uh, website before making their bookings. So you have to be sure that you always got the best rate. Now you got a fantastic website, you have a very good Booking Engine, then I arrive on the website, and I see that your price is double the price of booking.com. Why should I book there? 
Now, do you all work in parity rate? Do you all respect parity rate? Okay, so just stop it. Go on and just put five euros less on your website. You will not go to jail too. You can, you can Photoshop and you can break parity rate. I, and if, you know, if they want to put you to jail, just call me, I got a good lawyer. Um, competitive is, is based on price, service, and trust. Price, of course, is the leverage that is, is quickest. So if you are selling on booking.com at 100, you can put 98 on your website. And this is more visible if you are doing meta search. Sometimes I have clients, and that's, uh, that's the limit of um, TripConnect uh, for me. Sometimes you activate TripConnect and you think you will have a lot of direct bookings. But then you see that booking.com has a, a, a rate of 100 euro and your website has 120. Why should I book there? Do you remember a couple of years ago how it was? When you wanted to check the price on TripAdvisor, you had several pop-ups open, open up. So it was very hard. You needed to open each pop-up and check the rates. Now it's easy. Everything is in sync core page. So if you have, I'm not saying that much, but one or two euro less than booking.com, people will more likely book on your meta search. And if booking.com calls you, I always use the night manager excuse. You know, I said, I got a new night manager. He's 75 years old. He's just messed up with the channel manager. Let's do it like that. What is the third pillar? So convert demand, an emotional impact, a simple navigation, and a benefit or added value to the customer purchasing on your website. If you want to keep working in parity, at least give them something more you are charging for, for Wi-Fi, give Wi-Fi free for your guests that book directly, for example. And let's go straight to the fourth and last pillar, that is share. You know, some years ago, my presentation could have uh, finished here, because you got the, the guests, the guests arrive at the hotel, leaves the experience, that's it. You will never see him again. Right now, when he comes back, he will probably share the experience he had. So, and this is part of your job, you know? Don't think that your job is finished after the checkout. Your job is finished after the client arrive home, share uh, the experience, and you reply to him. So if you want to increase the number of shares on TripAdvisor or other social media, the only solution is to give a little more than what they expect. I had this client, uh, and this is, this is a good example. I had this client some uh, time ago, and it's typical in Italy that you have several hotels in the same building. I don't know if it's like you have it here in, uh, in Greece, but sometimes you have it kind of like little boutique in the same building, you have two or three hotels. So basically they were thinking about a full renovation of the building, but there were so many decision makers that they couldn't find the date. And as always in Italy, it was totally last second. So the client called me and said, look, the, uh, the week, uh, next week we will start the renovation. Okay, cool. But I have kind of like thousands of euros of reservation of people that will come to your place and they will see all the renovation in progress. So I knew that we could have a huge problem of um, reputation there. Consider you spent 200 euros to go to Rome, you arrive at the hotel, and the hotel is totally renovating. So you have noise all over, you know, uh, smell, dust, etc. So what we did, uh, I came out with this idea. Just said, look, give the minibar for free, and write a letter on the minibar uh, 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 excusing yourself for what is going on, okay? So now we gave a little more than what the client expected because the client didn't know. And I can tell you the amount of bed reservation we had, even with all this problem, was zero. And this cost the hotel average one euro fifty a day. Because there are, of course, there are people that will, you know, that will, if you got Charles Bukowski on your hotel, probably the minibar will be over in, in one hour. If you got me, I, I would never even open it. So always give something more that they expect. The second most search keyword is the name of the hotel plus the word review. So this is very important. Another thing you can do when you do a, a, an advertising campaign is to buy the name of your hotel and the word review. So they will not go to TripAdvisor, they will go to your website, okay? 
He's not their trip advisor. He went away, right? Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell them, huh? Don't put it on YouTube. We're friends. Uh, now, user shares very good experience or very bad experience. Okay, -ish experience, no. Okay, so what you need to do is to avoid very bad experience and to increase the very good experience. And to increase a very good experience, you need to over deliver. And I always tell you, the first job I had, I was a receptionist, you know, and I, so I know exactly how it works. A good marketing strategy, you can do advertising, you can do meta search, you can have a great website, you can have a fantastic rate, but a good strategy can be destroyed by a bad receptionist. And 90% of the issues that the client has in your hotel can be solved by a receptionist. And even if he cannot solve it, if the client has the impression that he's trying to solve it, it will not leave a bad review, okay? Now, of course, if your receptionists are rude or they don't even try, that guy will write a reception. Will, well, sorry, will write a, a, a bad review, okay? So this is something you really need to do. Before you even start calling me or other people to create fantastic website, train your receptionist. They can really destroy your budget or they can make it good. So the problem with receptionists, I have my own theory. There are, are there receptionists here? So we can speak freely. Okay, the, the, my theory with reception is the following. If they are good, they will never be receptionists for all their life. They will probably turn into front office manager, then sales manager, then GM, and then maybe something else. They will evolve into a new species, maybe. So the receptionists that work as a receptionist for 10 years, 15 years, they are not good receptionists, okay? So they are just... They are just there you know, to work eight hours, come back home, and do whatever they want to do. And the only language they understand is the money. So what you can do, if you want to increase your reputation, you can try a little game. And I tried several times with my clients. You know, Clients with so-and-so reviews, OK, I said, look, let's find some goals. Let's see that I want to, be, uh, I want to uh, gain four positions in one month. Okay, how we can do it? If we get this four position in one month, all the receptionists take 50 euro bonus. I'm talking about 50 euro, it's well, yeah, nothing. If in the review, the name of the reception is written, that guy will take double. Well, I can tell you, these receptionists that were barely alive after this bonus were doing anything to get a review. I am not joking. I remember this guy took the car and bring the, the, the guest at the train station. Okay? So this is something, consider it as an investment. Let's fix goal. That's true. It's, unfortunately, this is true. You know, there's nothing else you can do. You can try with electroshock, but for, uh, as far as I know, it's not even legal. So you can try with bonus. Okay? I'm not a Pablo. So what is the fourth pillar? The fourth pillar is you always over deliver. So just give anything more that the client expect. And always make sure that they know. Because sometimes you give an update, an upgrade. Maybe you are, you know, you got a lot of rooms available. You want to impress the client. You give an upgrade. You do it, right? When you are in low season. But you don't even tell the client. So the client doesn't know. Another thing I tried with a client was to Add something for free, kind of like upgrade or a bottle of uh, sparkling wine, whatever. You put it on the invoice and then you bar it. So the, the client can see it, but can see it as a gift. He needs to understand that you are giving a little more than what he is expecting. Because the client doesn't know if it's a superior room or if it's a standard room. He has no idea. Ask them to spread the words. You can use. There are tool, automatic tools, even in TripAdvisor, Review Express. I don't know if you use it. You can uh, send email to uh, your guest to um, ask to leave a review. Or you can print business card. The best, in my opinion, is this. And it's always something you need to do with the receptionist. Uh, receptionist is the last and the first person that the client see when he's uh, at your hotel. So basically, when they check out, they understand the feeling, the mood of the client. The only thing they need to do, they need to have two different folders. 
In the first folders, they will have all the happy clients. In the other folders, they will have all the non-happy clients. So after you have this, the general manager can come down, take the folder of the happy clients, send an email asking for a review. Then take the folders of the unhappy client and just destroy it. So you're sure that you will never send an email to this guy. Okay? I have a few hotels that if they send me an email now, even after years, I will write a flame review. Okay? So this is the best approach. Again, to do that, train your receptionist. If you mess up, admit it. Sometimes we do mistakes. So we're not perfect. Okay? So if you have a problem with a client, just admit it and that's it. And always, and this is key, over deliver. Just give them a little more of what they expect. So basically, that's it. All the hotel marketing is the, in these four pillars. It's pretty simple stuff. It's not rocket science. Popularize, capture, convert, and share. Popularize, just to sum it up. Distribution is being seen anywhere, what we call the billboard effect, OK? Capture, less is more. Always, less is more. If you think to put something more, just think that it's better to put something less on the website. And you always need to protect your brand. Convert, I really like this thing, I, I, I like to say it. Build your site for your guest, not for Google. When uh, I have clients that ask me, I want to have 5,300 keywords on my own page, so I am better optimized on Google. OK. That's not like this. What we need is that when I go to the website, I have an emotion. Don't think about Google, OK? Think about your customer. Remember, remember your, your work is hospitality. And hospitality is just in the world. Hospitality. It's not, you're not marketer, OK? And share. Always over deliver. Make sure that your guests understand that they are having a little more than what they booked. And tell them to spread the words to the family, on TripAdvisor, on all other review sites.